Since my last video, I've made a few changes to the appearance of my web page. Let me talk you through them. Notice that the text in the paragraph is now a blue colour. In fact, this colour is called medium blue. You can see here in the style. I've also changed the font to Footlight MT Light with a font size of 20 pixels and a line height, that's the distance between the lines, of 35 pixels. I was looking for something with a sort of classic look and feel to fit in with a nursery rhyme. It's a classic nursery rhyme. I've also changed the colour of my standout text. I've used a shade of green here. In fact, it's called Lime. So you can see here, Standout, Lime, and I'm using a font family of Papyrus with a size of 20 pixels and a weight of bold. And I think it goes quite well with the Footlight font. I've deliberately tried to pick up some of the colours from the picture. So the normal text here is the same sort of shade of blue as the waves on my picture. And I've used a similar shade to the boat for the standout text. So the whole page now seems to have a bit of harmony about it. I've also changed the appearance of my list. Each of the items in the list is now a colour called Hot Pink. And I've done that using a style in the head section. Li Colour Hot Pink. I'm using Floodlight again. You don't want to use too many different fonts on the same page or it starts to look messy. I've gone for a font size of 18 pixels and a line height, that's the distance between the bullet points, of 25 pixels. The style I've specified for UL applies to the whole list. Originally I had that down here. I was just applying the style to this particular list. But by moving it up here into the style section, any list I create on the page will have circles for bullet points. I want to make one more change to this list. I'd like to actually use my own picture for the bullet points. Let me show you how to do that. I've already prepared the picture. It's inside my pictures folder and I've called it starbullet.png. It's just a very simple little image file which I created using fireworks. You could use Photoshop or Paint or find something on the internet. The important thing is it's very small. To make this my custom bullet point, I'm going to use a slightly different style. Instead of list style type, I'm going to use list style image. And now I need to tell the web page what the image is called and where it can be found. And to do this, I'm going to use URL, Uniform Resource Locator. It looks very similar to the specification of my image down here. But notice I've used a forward slash instead of a backslash. If it's not working, it may well be that you've used the wrong type of slash. Also make sure that you spell this correctly, otherwise it won't find the bullet. But let's save it and see how it looks. And there we go, I've got purple stars for bullets now, making the page a little bit more interesting. Now there's one more thing I want to change on the page, and that's the hyperlink. At the moment, the hyperlink is using exactly the same style as the paragraph, and it's not particularly interesting. But the hyperlink has some special styles. Remember, the hyperlink is the anchor tag. So it's A, and then colon, link. I'm going to specify the colour that my hyperlink will be most of the time, until you click on it. I'll go with red for now. Now I'm going to specify the colour that my hyperlink will be when you move the mouse pointer over it. Let's use hot pink again. I'm going to specify the colour it'll be when it's active while you're clicking on it. I'll go for blue. And finally, the colour the hyperlink will be once it's been visited. So four different styles for the hyperlink. Let's see what the effect is. Reload the page. Notice the hyperlink is now red. That's the normal colour. When I put my mouse over it, it changes to hot pink. Move the mouse away, red again. So I've got this rollover effect, or this hover effect as it's properly known. When I hold my mouse down on the hyperlink, it changes to blue. It's now active. 
Normally you just click on it so you see a flash of blue. And when I come back to the page again, because I've visited the hyperlink, it's now lime green. The person viewing this page can now see whether they've visited the link or not. To turn it back to red, they'd have to clear the browser history. But you can see then the hyperlink has lots of different styles depending on its state. If I want to, I can add some more styles so the normal link colour can be red. And I can also set the font family for each of these states as well. Maybe I'll use papyrus. Let's just copy it from here. I'll do it for each state. Save the page. Reload. And my hyperlink's looking a little bit more interesting now. Now the last thing I want to do is to change the layout of my style definitions. I'm not going to change the styles. What I'm about to do now will make absolutely no difference to the appearance of the page, but it's just a much more common way of writing style definitions. Like this. And then I'm going to tab these in. I haven't added anything and I haven't taken anything away. All I've done is change where the line breaks are. It's more common to do this because, for example, if I wanted to add a font weight property to my heading style, I can just add it to a list here. And I can keep adding additional properties to my heading style and perhaps they're a little bit easier to see. So when you look at the styles on somebody else's web page, you'll probably see them laid out like this. As I said, it makes no difference whatsoever. Let me just resave that page and see if there is a change. Exactly as it was. Next time, I'm going to show you how to put these styles into a separate file, a style sheet. In the meantime, perhaps you'd like to make a few more cosmetic changes to your page. See if you can tie up some of the colours with your image. And perhaps try a custom bullet point.